Hi and welcome to the channel. In this episode I finish off the fin uh, by doing the top gusset and rounding the leading edge and we laminate the bow for the rudder. So join me in the video! Okay, so here we are with this uh, gusset that's going to be going across here. And so that everything matches height wise, the joint line there would match that joint line there. So it's just the way I like to keep everything sort of parallel going along uh, for when it's uh, covered, it, it'll look nice and smart. I am thinking about doing it in the same format as is on the plan there, so the gusset will go and have an angle going straight across. But from there to, it's not quite straight, you might be able to see there's a gap uh, going on that uh, angle there. So there's got to be a curve at this side. So I'm going to flatten out the end here and I'm going to use the rib template and draw in the line about a 16th inch low here I'll do the initial routed section as I've done for everywhere else and then we will look at how I can sort this bit out I might be able to route some of it and then it'll be just smoothing but I'll need everything to run so that it's nice and parallel with the leading edge going backwards and forwards so that's the plan let's see how we get on so here you see I'm marking up, checking everything out. As it turns out, going through with the router, I got the majority of it required very little sanding, but it was quite awkward clamping my jig on to make sure I got nice even depth, as you can see here. So I don't know how well it came out on the time, time lapse, but uh, this is cut here with a, a curve in it going down to about here where it's then straight so if I put the plywood on there it's, it, it's quite straight but if I put it on you can sort of see there's a gap at the back edge here so the whole gusset will need to have a flex going into it which will require a slightly different method of holding everything down for bonding. Okay, different method of uh, doing the uh, the gussets. Uh, in this case, because of a slope and because of the twist, it, it everything will want to slip and slide everywhere. So I've uh, put in my resin on the joint. There we go. So that's now sitting, but. This end wants to sit high. Uh, I've just used uh, lollipop sticks, stirring sticks, and I'm going to put a staple across the joint here, like that. I'm actually I don't need to put a, uh, a, a lollipop stick in this part here. You could staple straight into it but uh, I like using this because it helps when you come to take the staples out. You don't have the marks in there. And then I'm going to use another lollipop stick and I'm going to be pushing down just to bridge that gap and hold that flat. So, and there it's held in with, uh, with staples. It's held at the right sort of curve and uh, we can leave that to, to set off. A lot of people use staples to hold uh, their aircraft bits together. I'm not so keen. So here we are, taking out the uh, staples. I've taken one out already. And uh, see now why I put the uh, plastic coated lollipop stick in. 
makes it easy. I can lever. No marks are left through the levering on the uh, on the wood itself. These two little holes here will be from the uh, staple. Quite easy to sort out. I just uh, give this a sand to get rid of the uh, the surface glue. That. The dust's in the hole already, so I just used some thin sino. Over the holes. Then a gentle sand. The holes are filled. Uh, the, the, using thin sino allows, uh, soaks into the wood. So it gets right into the grain where it might be slightly damaged from the staple going in. The dust is in there, helps to just fill up and now that, that's filled. Job to do, job done. Right, so you can sort of see we've got a curve in that gusset on both sides. And uh, that's why I need to sort of staple it to stop it from slipping when they're clamping it, which we discussed. I've created a uh, template here with the shape for the leading edge. The back edges here should be level with the back of the leading edge strip and uh, so I can check the profile as uh, so I'm going to be using a plane and sanding to get this to shape. I can't use a router, it's too narrow for my round over bit. Okay then, so I've drawn, I don't know if it sort of shows up, but I've drawn lines either side here and on these faces here uh, to allow me to cut back to 45 degrees on those uh, and that way hopefully cut back using a, uh, a box plane and this mounted on the bench uh, with support and get the initial clean up and then from there hopefully I should be able to do some sanding. So the basic uh, 45 degree has been cut it's quite hard work uh, planing through the plywood you have to uh, run the plane at quite a shallow angle with quite a fine cut so quite a few passes to get to, to sort that out next section we'll try is sanding okay so the fin is complete uh, if we move in a little bit closer you can see that the lines on the plywood where I sanded it, or planed it and sanded it, are reasonably parallel, which uh, shows it's quite flat. The one, one of the ones on the other side isn't as perfect, so there must have been a slight uh, dip or something in the, uh, the leading edge when I routed it, but it's flat according to the straight edge. And if we look at the, uh, oops, if we look at the leading edge, you can see just the remnants of the pencil line from the rib profile which I drew on the end and it matches up with my profile checker. So this is uh, complete now and we're ready to go on to the rudder. So laminating uh, the bow for the rudder is very much the same as uh, the way I did the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer where I've have the outer section in hardly any resin, just the resin at the joint. And then each laminate that goes on is being resined on one side only. I have a little datum mark on there uh, on some of the laminates so I can line up and make sure that the steps in the joints are offset uh, an acceptable amount. In point of fact, I've worked to a greater extent than the, the minimum requirements. Um, the reason I only put resin on one side, as I think I stated on the leading edge bow, is it allows you to expel the air uh, between each of the laminates as you put it on. And there's a sufficient resin to ensure that there's a good bond. Normally you would put resin onto both surfaces to allow it to soak in and especially onto end grain uh, you'd put resin on, leave it for a few seconds or so before you attach the two components together. 
So I'll, I'll going through here, just applying the resin uh, quite quite straightforwardly. But you'll see in a bit, I'll uh, take a load of the clamps off, just so I can uh, get everything lined up uh, absolutely perfectly. So I just noticed that the joint wasn't quite in the right place and it wasn't making the datum. And just getting the final shape. And in this case, it's working really from one end to the other, unlike the leading edge bow where I work from the center out to each end. Okay, the lamination of the rudder is complete. Down here, you should see a series of lines. These are just pencil lines I used to get the lam different laminates into the uh, correct position so that we have the offset on all the joints. So if you go to the video linked up here, uh, you'll see how I did it on the uh, horizontal stabilizer leading edge. Uh, the same principles were applied to this. So I'll send uh, this down uh, ready for assembly and that'll be what we'll do in the next video is uh, we'll start looking at some of the, the different bits uh, in the construction of the rudder which is a change up from the fin and definitely quite a change up from the uh, rest of the tail plane. So until then look after yourselves see you in the next video bye now. Thank you for watching if you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up. You can subscribe or even hit the little bell notification for future videos. Any comments would be appreciated and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Remember, go fly and feel the sky.